Okay. I don't mind the lighting. Okay, seems all right. It seems about like it's been pretty consistent so far. Well, now it's stuck up there. Oh, yeah, you need a chair. Okay. I got it. To feed you? Hmm? She was cooking something to feed you? Possibly to feed us. And okay. I'm just going to film while we're walking. Oh, okay. I've got a lot of walking film. I don't know who painted this chair. Must have been your one of your relatives. Probably. I'm not even sure where the chair... I mean, I got some that came from my grandmother. And this looks like one of them. but. I don't know who painted it. It's kind of a pleasant afternoon. Mm -hmm. I just never imagined it would be foggy and wet down here. Sometimes it is, actually frequently. It's like, what do you expect? It's winter, certainly, and we didn't get it till December. Hmm. Late December, or not late, but you know. Let's take the chair. Bring your chair? Yeah, okay. in back. If you don't mind. Good luck. Oh, he is. Wow. Okay. Well, that'll be okay. You have the train and the cars. Okay. 
All right. Okay, say when. When? Act one. Scene opens in the spacious and rustic den of the Ponderosa. Pop scene sits at stage left watching Star Trek on TV. At center, Hoss and little Joe Cartwright are beating up on Tonto, the Lone Ranger's sidekick. Tonto does not resist, and presently he goes down after a double haymaker from Little Joe and Hoss, Tonto from the forest. Pranks, I needed that. Hoss says to Tonto, any time, good bud, to Little Joe. Hey, Little Joe. Little Joe, a bit restless, and says, Hoss picks Tonto up and heaves him over his shoulder. Hoss says to Tonto, let's go get you clean up the elephant. Tonto says, upsy daisy. Hoss and Tonto exit. And little Joe wanders over to where Hop Singh is watching Star Trek. He stands behind Hop Singh and watches TV for a minute or two. The theme music to Star Trek begins, gradually becoming the introduction to Little Joe and Hop Singh's duet. During the intro, they converse. Pops, little Joe says, Little Joe says, Oxy, that Kung Pao beef dish you made tonight tasted about like dog food. Popsy says, Popsy, not too good at Chinese dish with the joke. Popsy from Nova Cook, Nova. Popsy says, Popsy, not too good at Chinese dish with the joke. Hop scene from Nova Scotia. Little Joe says, whatever. I thought you were Oriental. You know, I like the old Star Trek better than the next generation. Hop scene says, Star Trek no good. Star Trek next gen. Star Trek is next. Hop scene says, Blue Jays. Pop scene says, Star Trek no good. Star Trek next generation much better. <coughs> Little Joe Grissom says, I said that old Star Trek is best. Pop scene half a scene in a kung fu stance. Captain Picard smarter than the spot. Little Joe says, watch your mouth. Pop scene says, what the Joe don't push it? As they square off for a fight, they seem to do it. A heated debate over the merits of Star Trek versus Star Trek the Next Generation. During an instrumental interlude, they begin grappling. And by the bad blast During an instrumental interlude, they begin grappling, and by the last verse are throwing punches. The song ends with no clear winner as the two roll in the forest version for adventure. Hoss re-enters the den as the song ends. He sees Little Joe and Hopson fighting on the floor and rushes over to the TV, turning it off. Hop says, Little Joe, Hopson, get up from there. They continue rolling on the floor. Hoss shakes his head and sighs, and then walks over and picks the two up and concludes their fight with a two arm shot to their jaws. They stand weak. Hoss says, That's it. No more TV on Monday. Now, Little Joe, you shake Hop Singh's hand there and apologize so he won't bring his gang out here. Little Joe, reluctantly shaking hands with Hop Singh, says, No hard feelings, you little creep. Hop Singh says, Look who's talking. Okay, no hard feeling creep, but now we have Chinese dog food dish all week. Sound of a horseback rider approaching out of gallop outside. Hoss says, someone's coming. Adam Cartwright bursts in the front door, dirty and sweaty. Little Joe says, Adam, what's wrong? Adam rushing across the living room. Have I ever got to pee? And then he exits. Hoss says, that's right, we don't have a toilet on the, out on the North 86. Hoss says, that's right, we don't have a toilet out on the North 86. Little Joe says, and that's nearly 15 miles away, half a day's ride. Hop Singh says, why, Adam, not just pee on ground? Nobody around. Hop Singh pee on ground. 
Hoss and Dino, he says, don't let me hear you talk like that again. I'm saying, I'd hate to have to tell Paul about this. Hoss says, I've seen tight with Mr. Ben, big boy. But okay, okay. I've seen used toilet. Adam enters at the trio to the Cartwright's boys' trio begins. Those elves speaking of our musical intro. Long ride in. Adam says, what a relief, brother. Hoss, Adam, and Little Joe sing the trio. We'll have toilets on the Ponderosa, in which they pledge devotion portable toys for out on the range with skies so blue and proper dumping facilities to Ben Cartwright stands from the front door. Ben says to Adam, why aren't you out on North 86? Adam says, I had to pee, huh? Ben says, well, boys, we'll tame this land yet. This is the hub scene. We need 50 cases of rock. The Marlboro man is bringing the boys over for a farewell barbecue night. I heard he's getting laid off, and all that billboard seniority to especially in Europe. Oh, you better throw out about 1.6 tons of meat too. He says to his son, as Hobson exits. By the way, boys, I saw a stranger out behind the jacuzzi just now. I says, did you recognize him, Paul? Adam says, Paul just says he was a stranger, you dummy. If he recognized him, he wouldn't have called him a stranger. Paul says, well, take this, Mr. Smarty Pants. Swings it out him. He ducks the punch, so Paul catches little Joe broadside, nearly decking him. A brawl ensues between the three brothers while the end looks on the following crowd. Despite the fisticuffs, there it has to not come up. Ben says, that's my boy. Little Joe breaks a board over Hoss's hat. Ben says, fellas, I wish your mama, who we never mention on this show, could see you now. She'd be proud, mighty proud. Adam breaks a clock radio over his own head as Hoss and Little Joe exchange body blows. Amidst this mayhem, Ranch hand Dubby enters in a tizzy. Dubby says, Mr. Cartwright, Mr. Cartwright, you gotta come quick. There ain't much time. Ben looks around irritated. You fool, I told you never to come in this house in unless it's an emergency. Dubby backs up the door. Sorry, Mr. Cartwright, but the camp is falling. Ben says, Boys, hold it. They stop fighting. The camp is falling. The Cartwrights look at each other, suddenly excited. Hoss and Little Joe and Adam say together, Sex! Ben says, let's go, boys. They rush out the door to a lively but ominous Star Trek day. <laughs> Wait, put it on pause for a second. <coughs> this is paint falling off the house that I've not fixed. I don't even know what this is. There used to be a vacuum system. This is really? long before I ever lived here. This lady had this vacuum system. And I just figured it was just much too much trouble to like get rid of it. It's shocking that someone would have a vacuum system. Mm, well, let's see. I, if I can, I, I might can remember her name. Uh, Annie Mae Whitten. Nice name. Whenever you're ready. Okay. This scene also takes place in the den of the Ponderosa. Hoss, Adam, and Little Joe are standing around the fireplace, but no fire is burning. Hoss says, looking at the cold fireplace, I like it better this way. Adam says, Paul told Little Joe to get that prairie dog out of the chimney two weeks ago. Little Joe says, pipe down, big shot. Hoss says, Funny that little varmint don't stink yet. But easy, fellas, let's wait on a Marlboro men's boys to tussle. Let's not get all tuckered out too soon to tangle with them pretty nice. Hoss, Little Joe, and Adam say, Punzai! 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 Hoss shouting towards the kitchen. Hopsing, how's that 1.6 points? 
hot scene. How's that 1.6 tons of beef coming along? Hopsing sticks his head out the kitchen door, answering sarcastically. It's all dead, Hoss. Ben Cartwright enters in a wheelchair, pushed by ranch hand Dudley. Little Joe says, Uh-oh, false senile again. Hoss says, It was a whiskey that done it. Adam says, No way, dude, it was the sex. A knock comes at the door. Hopsing re-enters the den and answers the door. The Marlboro man enters, followed by a dozen of his men, all of whom wear calico shirts, six guns. The Marlboro man, oh, I lost my line. The Marlboro man enters, followed by a dozen of his men, all of whom wear calico shirts, gun belts with six shooters, and bowler hats. One of the Marlboro men's has pointed ears. Ben indicating to the man with pointed ears, Who's that? Marble man apologetically. He likes the original Star Trek. Hopsin gives man <coughs> Hopsin gives Marlboro man a dirty look as he exits to the kitchen. Dudley wheels Ben over to Marlboro man and they shake hands, obviously old friends. Music begins as the two sing their duet with a male chorus, the Marlboro Man and a Cartwright Boy. Hold the hat. As they sing their duet with male chorus, the Marlboro Man and the Cartwright Boys. Hold the cow hostage, punch a bunch of face. As the song ends, Pa slugs Marlboro Man in the gut from his wheelchair. Sending him reeling backwards into the arms of his men. Ben says, Don't you just love those old songs of Marlboro Man? Sorry to hear you got sacked. Marlboro Man recovering from his punch. Why? If you weren't wearing them wheels, I'd. Then Dudley interrupts, arriving with huge glasses of rot gut on a silver tray sporting a Bullhorn's car hood ornament. The predictable <coughs> Dudley interrupts, arriving with huge glasses of rot gut on the silver tray, sporting a bull's horns car hood ornament. The predictable hostility passes, and everyone takes drinks, but this is in turn interrupted by a knock at the door. Everyone stops what they are doing and looks towards Ben and Marlboro Man, alarmed. Hoss says, Who's that? Ben says, Not a clue, son. He draws his pistol. Little Joe, drawing pistol and taking cover behind the TV set, shouts towards the door. Open the door slowly and come in. A United Parcel Service delivery man enters, carrying Roy Rogers' famous horse, Trigger taxidermy and transported via wheels attached to the bottom of the hooves. Hoss, suddenly in a jolly mood, says, Look who's here! Hoss, suddenly in a jolly mood, says, Looky who's here! It's old taxidermy Trigger! <laughs> and Little Joe says, Hey, Trigger, are you still going out with taxidermy Flipper? Silence from Trigger. Hoss says sympathetically, Well, he never was no Mr. Ed. Marlboro man ranking slightly. <coughs> look, look, Ben. Some of my boys are kind of partial to Trigger. Ben says to the Marshal, <coughs> Ben says to the Marlboro man's boys, Go easy, fellas. Little Joe didn't mean any harm making fun of that four-legged stiff. Any friend of yours is a friend of mine. Hoss, feed taxidermy trigger some mothballs. There's another knock at the door. Everyone is alarmed again. Hoss says, I got a feeling here comes trouble, Pop. Ben says, Little Joe, you and Adam ride to Afghanistan. Tear the ship. Ben says, Little Joe, you and Adam ride to Afghanistan. 
tell the sheriff to plant his gourds later in the season and don't use so much fertilizer. Adam said, right, Pa. Little Joe says, but Pa, what about proper fiber in the cup? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> little, little Joe says, but Pa, what about proper fiber content in the diet? Pa says, don't be hot-headed, little Joe. Throughout all this, Hop Singh has been increasingly agitating. <laughs> I'm fucking all my lines up. <laughs> so so uh, throughout all this, Hop Singh has been increasingly agitated, giving angry glances at both Little Joe and Marlboro Man. There's a second knock at the front door. Hop Singh says sarcastically, Mr. Ben, guess who come at your dinner? Ben stands and pushes the wheelchair aside, apparently his old self again. As Hop Singer, <laughs> as Hop Sing answers the door, the lure of food and drink overcomes the cowboy's alarm and they begin digging in. Hop Sing opens the door and Tonto enters. Marlboro Man notices his entrance. Marlboro Man says, Who's this? Hoss says, this is Tonto, the Lone Ranger's sidekick. Tonto says, Tonto not sidekick, Tonto big star, Fatsy. Little Joe says, yeah, sure. Only slightly less famous than a taxidermied horse. Tonto says to Little Joe, you little squirt, I'll break you into Hoss says, hold on, fellas. Let's eat first. Then he says to the Marlboro Man. You know, Marlboro Man, I can't believe you don't know who Tonto is. He's been on TV and the movies for 50 years. Marlboro Man says somewhat bitterly. Well, you probably never thought about this, but you don't see a lot of TV from a billboard. The music opens for Tonto's song. In the first verse, Tonto tells the others that the stranger out by the jacuzzi is an old woman and that she's coming to the house. The Cartwrights and Marlboro men all look up and re recall in guarded alarm at this news. They join in the men's chorus expressing their terror of old ladies with the lines, We've all been bad boys then, and it might be our mom, matter no wet him. Only Hop Sing does not join in the song, slipping away into the kitchen. The song ends and Tonto crosses over to Ben's liquor cabinet as the others mill about uncertainly. Tonto takes out two elegant tumblers and a bottle of green chartreuse. Ben follows Hop Sing into the kitchen, giving a kind of high five sign as it recrosses the room. Tonto mutters. Tonto also tight with Ben Cartwright and says to Marlboro Man, Tonto only tell truth. Tonto muttering. Tonto also tight with Ben Cartwright says to Marlboro Man, Tonto tell truth only smoke camels. Marlboro Man says distractedly, I quit two years ago. Little Joe says to the Marlboro Man, well, looky here, you turncoat. We smoke Marlboros, indicating his family. The Cartwrights all take out cigarettes and light it up, except for Ben, who fumbles in his pockets. Ben says, Say, can I buy my smoke from one of you boys? Adam says, Sure, Pa. Little Joe, give Pa a smoke. Little Joe says to Adam, Dog. Ben gives him a cigarette and a light. Here, Pa. Ben says with pride in his voice, Thanks, son. Footsteps are heard on the front porch. Everybody looks towards the door as Granny from the Beverly Hillbillies kicks the door open and enters carrying a double barrel shotgun. Little Doe says somewhat breathlessly, Hi. Pa says, Granny, what the heck are you doing here? You don't belong on Bonanza. 
Granny says, You're darn tootin' I don't, but I'm here anyway, you flat hats. Hoss says, Now wait a minute, my hat ain't flat. It's got a distinctly rounded shape on top. Little Joe says, Why you? Goes for his gun. Granny beats him to the draw and levels the shotgun at the cartwrights. Granny says, All right, you bunch of two-legged cattle, now listen up. I ain't come here for no shootout. I come to set the record straight. Hear me out, and I'll leave, and nobody will get heart. All right, you bunch of two-legged cattle, now listen up. I ain't come here for no shootout. I come to set the record straight. Hear me out, and I'll leave, and nobody will get hurt. Barring the usual risk of accidents around home, increasingly common these days. Music begins for the next song. Granny begins solo with a stanza telling the Cartwright boys that Ben is not their father, that he only adopt, adopt. Music starts for the next song. Granny begins solo with a stanza telling the Cartwright boys that Ben is not their father. Music starts for the next song. Granny begins solo with a stanza telling the Cartwright boys that Ben is not their father and that he only adopted the boys during the infancy after their real father walked out on the family. Following this revelation, Hoss joins in singing the musical question to Ben. Who is our papa? Guess it ain't you. No, no. And uh, in the third stanza, Ben confesses that he doesn't know because, in fact, he was an affluent drifter when he kidnapped them from their mother. The music draws to an emotional climax and then falls pensive as the Marlboro Man tells the boys, I'm your real dad, hoss. I gave you your first ten-gallon hat, but I fell for a cute trail, boss. Sorry about that. Finally, Little Joe and Adam sing a du duet. Sure glad she ain't here, but who's our ma? Wait a minute, I lost my line. <clears throat> uh, oh yeah. This song, the song is finally interrupted when Granny fires a shotgun into the ceiling. Granny says, I came here to talk, not listen, says to the Cartwright boys. Boys! Ben is a fine but occasionally boring man. You've been lucky. I'm your real mom. I was young and crazy then, but I got to run. Let's talk. You can contact me through my agent. See you, fellas. Granny exits. Everyone stands around digesting this information, both deeply moved by these developments and relieved that... The they are no longer uh, in the presence of an old woman. Hoss says, gee, I wonder if that means that Jed Clampett is my cousin. Adam says, shuddering, perish the thought. After all, this is not possible. This is TV. Ben says, boys, I don't know what to say. Little Joe says, ah, shucks, Paul, we ain't protector. Hoss says, that's right, Paul. A little blood tie don't make us no never mind. And he says to Marlboro Man, No hard feelings to you, Marlboro Man. Uh, Dad? <clears throat> Marlboro Man says, I ain't worried about none of that tenderfoot crap. Now back off, you caught rights. My boys ain't done eating and drinking yet. And Ben says, That's the spirit. Business as usual. The general hubbub of partying resumes. Adam says, Hey, look, Star Trek's coming on TV. The TV has been switched on by one of the, mar the, the pointed ears. The TV has been switched on by... Wait a minute. The TV has been switched back on by Marlboro Man's pointed ears, man. And Adam says, Hey, look, Star Trek's coming on TV. 
Little Joe shout, looking. Little Joe, looking towards the TV. Oh yeah, and it's the original. That's the one I like. Shouts to the kitchen door. Hey, hot scene. The good version of Star Trek is coming on. To hell with strengths. <clears throat> Little Joe, looking towards the TV. Oh yeah, and it's the original. That's the one I like. Shouts through the kitchen door. Hey, hot scene. The good version of Star Trek is coming on. To hell with strengths aboard. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> strength. I keep saying strengths. <laughs> let, let me see. Where was it? Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. I lost my mind. Let me do it. Yeah. Tonto sticks his head through the kitchen door. Says to Little Joe. Oh, oh, oh wait a minute. That's not my line. Did, see, I made this correction. That's why I keep losing it. The TV has been switched on by the pointed ears, Marlboro Man. Adam says, hey, look, Star Trek's coming on TV. Little Joe looking towards the TV. and Oh, yeah, and it's the original. That's the one I like. And he shouts through the kitchen door. Hey, hot scene. The good version of Star Trek is coming on. To hell with shrinks on board the Enterprise. Tonto sticks his head through the kitchen door. Tonto says to Little Joe, hey, you chump. Tonto not dig crap to my man hop scene. Picard rules. Tonto slams the kitchen door. Following a stunned silence, the insult registers with the cartwright board. Little Joe says, Fellas, fellas. Tonto siding with hop scene on this Star Trek thing. Marlboro Man says to his own men, Whoa, gents. We got a workable problem here. Little Joe thinks that the old Star Trek is best. Hoss says, Hoss says, Huh? But Little Joe, I like Next Generation the best. Little Joe says, Why, you big hunk of lard? Several of Marlboro's men's, big, several of Marlboro men's, several of Marlboro's men, that's hard to say. Several of Mar women. Several of Marlboro's men began chanting. We like next generation too. A general shoving match ensues, escalating into Hoss and Little Joe socking each other in the jaw. Music starts for a song. Ben and Marlboro men sing a lament celebrating cigarettes. The land unplowed, a good horse, and no rules allowed. After their duo, Tonto and Hopsing enter from the kitchen, replacing the former duet with one of their own, announcing the imminent rearrival of <coughs> Granny Wither. Double barrel bang, now accompanied by a gang. The song ends immediately. There's a sharp knock at the door, along with the sound. And the song ends, and immediately there's a sharp knock at the door, along with the sound of many scuffling feet. Granny from outside says, "Posse, open up, you geeks." Hoss says, "Fellowship, this ought to be fun." <clears throat> Enter a group of teenage males of all races, each obviously wearing modern teen male hairstyles and fashions streetwise and tough looking the cowboys all stared dumbfounded they all gradually acknowledge each other in sorrow they all enter a group of teenage males of all races each wearing modern teen hairstyles and fashions streetwise and tough looking the cowboys all stare, dumbfounded. They gradually acknowledge each other in silence while the Star Trek episode plays on TV. Ben addresses the youth, ben addresses the youth gang in a brief song. He welcomes them to the Ponderosa and to television. All you bright young thugs, 
then tells them they're about to join their older brothers in that time honored of American endeavors to decide through fisticuffs with a knuckle sandwich conflagration if it's Star Trek we've seen enough or Star Trek next generation the song ends with a reverential silence while everyone stands about sniffling and choking back tears of pride suddenly Granny brandishes her, her shotgun admonishes all present Granny says it was getting boring over in the peanut gallery Meanwhile, a vast melee is underway. Hoss flings a mighty left at taxidermy tricker. Meanwhile, a vast melee is underway. Hoss flings a mighty left at taxidermy trigger, but misses. Adam slugs himself in the jaw mercilessly. Little Joe grabbing Adam's arm. Easy, big fella. He's had enough. On the TV, Star Trek is suddenly replaced by an announcement that Pearl Harbor has just been bombed in World War II. Granny and Marlboro Man are grappling on the bar. Marlboro Man, looking at the TV, says, Why is that on the news? That was over 50 years ago. Taking advantage of Marlboro Man's distraction, Granny pulls on his nose, causing a rubber mask he has been wearing the entire time to come off. Everyone stops fighting and stands back in disbelief as Marlboro Man is revealed to be none other than Captain Picard from Star Trek, The Next Generation. Captain Picard says to the Cartwrights, Yes, gentlemen, it's true. I, Captain Picard, hero to some and nemesis to others, am your real father. Hop Singh says, not only that, but, <laughs> but Hop Singh actually Japanese spy using secret info. Hop Singh says, not only that, but Hop Singh actually Japanese spy using secret info from Ponderosa to bomb Pearl Harbor 50 years ago. Ben says, huh? Little joke suddenly disoriented. I, I wish I I wish I could just say beam me up, but I can't remember that guy's name. Tonto says, it's Scotty. Little Joe says, Oh yeah, Scotty. Distracted mumbling to itself. Little Joe says, Oh yeah, Scotty. Distracted mumbling to himself. Yeah. Beam me up, Scotty. Scotty, Scotty, Scotty. Last, <laughs> with a brutal irony. Final act. Same scene as before, except that it's later that night. Only Ben, Picard, Granny, Tonto, and Hop Singh remain upright, and they're standing around the bar. Everyone else is unconscious on the floor, scattered about the room among broken furniture. Peking Duck and a bottle of Rhine wine are being consumed at the bar. Ben surveying the scene at the room. I'm telling you the things you have to do to get the boys to sleep. Music comes from the TV. It is a scene music to Deep Space Nine. Hop Sing. Hop Sing says, Hop Sing safe. Oh no, not another Star Trek. All the cowboys and youth gang members sit up and sing the song with those at the bar. Granny was cool with her double barrel too, and we fit and fought like good boys all. But concerning Star Trek, what the heck? There's better sales. No. Uh -oh. All the cowboys and youth gang members sit up and sing the final song with those at the bar. Granny was cool with her double barrel too. And we fit and fought like good boys all. But concerning Star Trek, what the heck? There's better things to find ourselves facing. We'd rather watch Perry Mason. The curtain falls as they sing the last chorus. It was a kind of stupid night at the...
Ponderosa. But except for the teenagers, we weren't bored. <laughs> Dog in next door somewhere. Oops. I called them up. I said, "They said you got you, you've got to replace this. See, now instead of the sewage flowing downhill from the backyard, it gets pumped uphill." And so I said. Uh, uh, what's gonna happen? But it was fun. Well, then it came out real good, didn't it? Well, I got real excited about it. And <laughs> okay, that means it came out real good. Yeah, it's been a while since I've gotten excited about it. <laughs> this has been a very fun afternoon. Hey, you can always go to Mobile. True. Well, the car people. How long were you guys sick when you were sick? Oh, it lasted for. Ah! Ooh, bless you. Lasted for days. Three or four days. It was kind of a bummer. Ah! I think I'm going to sneeze more than that. Well, go ahead. I, I will. Don't worry. <laughs> Just hit me if I'm making. Oh, you don't want to be smoking on TV. Or on TV. <laughs> <laughs> They have a state park, I'm going to say, about halfway between here and Utah. And it's, uh, they got a more or less permanent facility where they do uh, mold making workshops and make, and he does sculpt. Oh, I'll show you one. I'm waiting there. Uh, there was a sculpture that was done by the was it? And then just inexpressibly, I mean inexplicably, it's got like these illustrations that may or may not have anything to do with the text. Oh, that's, that's good. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it, this is really good. Uh, <clears throat> wait a minute, where's that first line? <laughs> this, this mayor. Is all the mayor of New Orleans calls up. <clears throat> well, in the first place, one of the main characters is Papa LeBuff. Fell apart. The, the fact is that my main partner in that is a little bit mentally ill. Oh. Um, I mean, not that, that's an insult. I don't mean that, but. Emotionally, he, he kind of comes and goes. Well, listen, like for example, this is a few weeks ago. He's a, it turns out, I didn't realize this at the time, but he's a misogynist. Oh, uh huh. Mm. C calls up, you know, and talking about. I mean, I mean, otherwise he's a brilliant, brilliant man. Uh -huh. But when you start talking about wanting to kill women, uh-uh. Bye-bye. Mm -mm. Yeah. So that's why there's no surrealism going on in Alabama. Somebody else and somebody else, 
and I mean, we had regular meetings, you know, and we conducted exhibitions. We did this exhibition <laughs> at Dora's house where the only way to enter the house was to crawl through a tunnel on your hands and knees. <laughs> cool. It was a good show. It was. It must have had a hundred pieces in there. No, the, no, those were the halcyon days. Did you build the tunnel, or how'd you get? Yeah, uh, I just uh, kind of took some uh, pieces of wood and some plastic, you know, mm -hmm. and put it over the front door, so that the only way to enter house. And also, we did this. Like our basement down here, mm -hmm. her basement, Dora's basement, was concrete. Mm -hmm. Filled the whole thing with water and had an indoor underground lake. Really? It, with a bridge across it. <laughs> <laughs> that was 15, 20 years ago. Back when there was a surrealist movement in Birmingham. Huh.